Being surrounded by just people who were hungry to make a change in the world made me want to elevate myself and yeah. create a great work ethic. Just feeling great because I was making more change. I was yeah. changing my life. But it, I all address it strictly to making that leap and being like, I'm going to do something different that I have never done. You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. Hey, what's up, my friends? Welcome to the Christoph Lewis Podcast. This is conversation number 92, and I'm super excited that you're here with me for yet another episode of Conversations with Inspirational People. This is the first of two installments within the Christoph Lewis Podcast, the other ones being Contemplation with Christoph, which is just me, and I talk about some really motivational, inspirational stuff that um, actually just is on my mind for that day or that week that has changed my life or an epiphany that I've had in my life that I want to share with you. I always speak from personal experience and speaking of speaking from personal experience my guest today is Nikita Kurens and he had a revelation this year in 2019 in March he had a birthday and decided he wanted to change his life for the better he's already had a great growth mindset but he describes this it's so cool I talk about career transitions but he talked about like It was this mental career transition, like his mind changed so much and it was so cool to be able to dig deep and do why, 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 why? I always want to know why. It's one of the most important questions we can ask ourselves. He asked himself this question and so, so many more questions. And this conversation was so juicy, so good, full of amazing content. And he talked about some hard stuff. He's a basketball player professionally. He got a bad injury. Um, and he couldn't play it for years and suffered from depression and had a bad car accident and all these things led him to the incredible human being that he is today so this one was great really really good and i can't wait to share it with you remember you can find this one and all the other contemplations and conversations on christophlewis.com forward slash podcast and you can find me on instagram at christoph lewis so without further ado welcome to the christoph lewis podcast Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, it's an absolute blast. I uh, We were just talking about our mutual friend, Anthony, that brought us together. And he's like, I had another person on here as well, Joshua Evans. And the, uh, the fact, like I told Josh, like the fact that you guys all know each other, it's like, I don't even need to do my due diligence on this person because like you guys vouch for each other, you're friends. And, and Anthony was awesome. So I was more than happy to get you on here. And I was so grateful that you wanted to be on here as well. So I'm super appreciative of that. We were talking like a second ago offline and you were saying like, I don't know how you put it, but you're like, I wanted, I wanted to change up my whole entire 2019 and everything. And I just like, I think that's so cool. What was like your mindset behind that? Like, did this come out of the blue or were you like, I need a, I need a massive life change. Uh, so it goes back to when I turned 30. So when I turned 30, I actually ended up going on my birthday to watch Tony Ro- uh, Tony Robbins, right? Nice. So my birthday is March 29th and Tony Robbins was in Montreal. So I was like, you know what? It's a sign. I'm going to get in the car. I'm going to drive. I'm going to listen to Tony Robbins. I'm going to be one of those guys who changes his lives. <laughs> at 30. You know, people say he was flipping burgers till 30. Then he something clicked. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you know what? I, I'm like, I want to be one of those people. I always strive to be better. Um, and I usually say I have this slogan and kind of like a company that I built. I say, do more, be better. Right. So mm-hmm. it's always challenging yourself. So that's when my whole like more personal development search happened. And it slowly was planting seeds. Like I was taking one seminar up to another one. And basically in November of the last year, I was in Spain and Palma de Mallorca was training professional beach volleyball players. Oh, wow. And I, I came back and I just felt empty. I was like, I'm not making enough money, nor I don't feel like I'm doing have as much purpose. And I kind of, I need to change something up. Like something yeah. is not working out. Yeah. Like 
I'm doing great. I'm helping people, but it's not on a scale that I want to impact the world. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? I got to start looking for solutions. So I started uh, doing a lot of research. I started meditating more. I started writing in a journal. I, I have a lot of thoughts, but I never oh, wow. put it on a paper. And I, So I started, I created a routine for myself to write in the journal every single morning. I was trying to wake up at 4.30 a.m. because I still was on a European time. Yeah, yeah. And I just continued doing that. It was That's very smart. easy for me to That's do That's really so. smart, yeah. It was a, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was seamless because yeah. I didn't have to try. I was still was on their time. So I was kind of yeah. trying to do that for a while. Genius. And I started noticing, I followed this guy, uh, David Meltzer. Yeah, he's been on the yeah. podcast. I love David. He's exactly. he's incredible. Yeah, exactly, absolutely amazing. And I was considering maybe to get coached by him or whatnot. Uh, but he said this one thing that very resonate with me is that do not put a deadline on anything that you want to accomplish. So if you were saying about creating more capital, just say I want to make two times as much money as I'm currently making to create a freedom for vibrations to flow. And I started doing exactly that. So I would write three same goals every single day. One of, they, one of them would be, I want to live in an abundant state of mind and attract mm -hmm. influential people into my life. Then another one would be my financial goal, where I would be talking about, I want to make two times as much money as I'm currently making, and I want to make sure that I create as much impact as possible. And I just kept writing it okay. every single day. And I started noticing that I was getting happy. I was writing yeah. my gratitude. And I started, even though I wasn't seeing as much changes yet for my like outside world, mm -hmm. I started seeing more on the inside how I was sure, feeling. Sure. And from there, I started making more de serious decisions. So I, I, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Dr. Joe Dispenza. Gosh, it rings a bell, but go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I'm not familiar enough to recite so anything. Cur currently, currently, he has this absolutely amazing book that is called Breaking a Habit of Being Yourself. Okay, He's I'll write that down. Yes, he's making, basically talking about how we are hardwired to perform the same things based on our environment and we have to make an effort and basically we are our biggest enemy and mm -hmm. on a quantum, in a quantum field, you, we are an energy and mm -hmm. then that's all we are, really are and there are already multiple variations of us exist in the future. So there's a variation of you where you potentially never served. But, or there's a variation of you that mm -hmm. where you're a multimillionaire. So he kind of starts uh, talking about how your brain is connected to your heart and to your body and how you basically through a power of meditation and a thought expanding on a law of attraction can create any kind of reality. Oh, wow. So basically I started getting a little bit into that stuff, getting more educated. Huh. And I decided I'm going to invest money in uh online business coaching okay so that was my big step and i i didn't really have so i, I think i signed up for a mastermind which made me go all the way to uh, tampa and then i also signed up for another program and i just was like yo i want to just take as much information as possible and that became my best decision i didn't really have it i put everything on a credit card yeah i was like i wasn't sure if i was making the right decision yeah I was like, it was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was scary <laughs> But then, but then when I found out that I was already going to Tampa, I was like, you know what? There's going to be Grant Cardone, who was also on your Grant Cardone 10X yeah. conference. So yeah. I'm like, I have to go to that because I've been respecting and following Grant Cardone for such a long period of time. And there's certain things that you can learn from everybody. And the only thing that I'm like a sponge. I just want to soak in as much information yeah. as possible yeah, from anybody. Too. I love that. Yeah. So I basically ended up going there and I had five days in between one conference and another mastermind. So I stayed in Miami and I got connected with Anthony. Oh, and okay. what I learned, and we, we shot a really cool workout video. We hung out, uh, we shot some other content. And it, you know, when you meet certain people and you just feel like the energy is right. Yeah. You talk on the same topics. It's like, you've known this person all your whole life. That's exactly how we clicked. Like, we That's thought so cool. the same way. It just was like literally law of attraction, bringing you to the right people who will motivate you, push you, and yeah. help you create something amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's from there, like we build a friendship. We still message each other all the time. Uh, I'm planning on coming to Miami to do some work as well sometime soon. And that from there, 
my year just started getting better and better and better from making those connections yeah. to see, seeing ROI from being in Miami because it was my first time being in a warm country and during our winter. And winters in Toronto are really cold, <laughs> right? So yeah, yeah. I was happy. And then being surrounded by just people who were hungry to make a change in the world mm -hmm. made me want to elevate myself and yeah. create a great work ethic. So for my birthday, I hit my first huge financial milestone. And I was like, you know what? I really wanted to hit this goal for a really, really long time. And I was like, boom, I did it. And then the months after that, 2K more. The months after that, another 2K more, right? And it just, everything just continued going up. And I was just feeling great because I was making more change. I was yeah. changing my life. But it, I all address it strictly to making that leap and being like, I'm going to do something different that I have never done. It's, that's crazy. You said, I'm just so pumped listening to all this, but it's so cool how it goes all the way back to making one decision and one major decision just can change everything. Like literally everything. And it just gets, it's like the, I think it was, I'm trying to, I'm reading a lot of books recently, so I'm trying to remember which one it was, but I think it was the one thing by Keller and he's talking about tipping dominoes and of course, how you tip a small domino, tips a bigger domino, tips a bigger domino. And you can, I think in like 11 dominoes, you can tip something that's, I don't know how many times bigger, but the point is, is such a small little maneuver can gain, help gain this momentum to do bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger things. And you made this one decision and then now you're meeting all these people, you're hitting your financial goals and he keeps going and he keeps going and he keeps going. And one of the things you said that I completely, I have the same mindset as I just, I wanted to learn. I want to learn. And you did a lot of self-reflection, it sounds like to me. So you said, one of the really important things I don't want people to miss is that you said, you didn't notice things changing outwardly, but you noticed things changing inwardly in yourself. And you noticed that it changed a lot. And that was one of the things when my life started to change and I started to pursue this kind of mindset as well. I didn't really notice the world around me change. And quite frankly, it took years for the world around me to change. And I had to keep up the faith in myself that this constant yearning for knowledge and wanting to better myself. And then when I realized I didn't want to keep that in and I wanted to help other people realize that within themselves, eventually, slowly but surely, my life outside of my body, outside of my mind, that started changing. And then that's when stuff started getting crazy. And it's like when you start seeing like a little bit, so you're in the fitness, obviously, when you start seeing like uh, a muscle grow for the first time and you're like, oh, wow, like <laughs> I see you. Like, I, I like that. I like that. Let's, let's, let's keep that going. Let's keep that going. So when you see growth, it's just such a good feeling to continue to see that growth and want to work on it and want to work on it. And then like that law of attraction, like you talked about, holy crap, is that ever true? Like, I find that the more that you figure out who you are and the type of person that you want to be, you can easily, more easily identify the type of people that you want to be around with. And you find them and you just, and like you said, you connected so deeply with Anthony so quickly. And it's just, it's just, and now, and now we're able to have this conversation. You see what I'm saying? Like, because of you doing this small thing all the way back in March, you did all a million things until this point in time, you met Anthony, which he was on the podcast on here. And then we met each other through him because he said, I know this guy who might want to be on the podcast. He's great for it. Like, that's crazy to me. Like, that's so cool because you made this one choice. I made this choice 19 months ago to start a podcast and then our lives have now forever changed for the better because of that. And holy moly, it's just, it's amazing. And one of the first things you said was you started, well, the, I think it was kind of cool to do like the time hack where you, <laughs> you came off of Europe and you just kept on going with that time. And a lot of people have a hard time waking up, but you were, um, you were meditating, you said, you were journaling and you were um, writing gratitude. Oh my gosh. Yes. Now, I think one of the biggest things, I love all those things. And one of the things I do most is gratitude, bar none. Okay. Like absolutely, I do gratitude and that's really helped me. It, it just, it just <clears throat> eradicates any type of depression that I ever feel. And I wanted to end this um thought on I deal with career transitions a lot I love talking about them I had my own career transition and what I see in the story that you just uh, transcribed to us 
is not necessarily a queer transition, but I think it's so, I'm like excited just about to say it. Like it was this mental transition of your old self into your new self. And you are still that same person, but at the same time, you're really not. You have all these new thoughts and opinions and friends and goals. And it's so incredible how people say people don't change, but people do change and you can change. And your story here that you just told us is exactly that. It's incredible to me. Uh, I agree with you. The thing is, if you look at the spectrum of certain things, it's we all have certain core values and i believe those core values mm -hmm. that what you're trying to align yourself with so whenever i would say i met anthony or anybody else that i i meet uh subconsciously i recognize what are my core values are and i will align those people with those core values and i'll be like sure. okay i want mm -hmm. these people to be in my life or i do not want people in my life let's say i'll use an example uh i cannot stand cheating men Right. Mm -hmm. Because I believe that they're cowards. Mm -hmm. Right. And so basically there's and this is I'm going to put somebody very big on blast right now, <laughs> which is uh, I would look to him as a mentor. Right. Uh, you probably know who that is. Uh, his name is Lewis House. Sure. Lewis House is a uh, wrote the book School of Greatness. He yeah. helped me immensely. Yeah, I got to, it back here. Yeah. Exactly. Helped me immensely. Uh, at, like it was one of my first awakening hours. But the minute I found out that he cheated on his ex-girlfriend, I stopped listening to his podcast because like he, him and I do not align anymore. I don't care how much value he can mm -hmm. bring it mm -hmm. because you can be talking about greatness and not be able to be a strong character. Mm -hmm. You talk about building a strong character and you yourself had a moment of weakness that cost your relationship. I just, I, I find it hypocr hypocritical, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And that's so I would not be able to align somebody with like that. My personal career started in, uh, I used to play professional basketball. At age of 21, mm -hmm. I had to put a metal rod in my hip. Mm -hmm. So I had to put okay. a metal rod in my hip because I have a condition called avascular necrosis. So from 21 to 25, I was dealing with a depression due to the fact that I couldn't find my own identity i wasn't I, I, I always thought i was an athlete but here i couldn't walk i couldn't play sports anymore yeah. uh, i was always in pain so it was very very difficult for me and at 25 i got in a car accident oh, wow. which made my hip situation even worse and that where was my first awakening point so i was dealing with a depression and i was a great trainer but i felt like how can i fix others if i cannot fix myself yeah and I actually didn't huh. touch basketball for almost two years because I was so it, it was creating so many pain points because I was so good back then. And now I just didn't want to do anything. And then from an age of like 25, 26 to 30, I really started to concentrate on biomechanics, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. mobility, movement and recovery and because i was spending so much time on the physiotherapy i was like all right how can we get better better yeah. better yeah and i started training other athletes i started uh i took my own pain point and i was like how can i help these people to not go through what i went through okay. to change their mindset of what was important in the fitness change their mindset how health actually not only physical health but the mental health affects your rest of your life because a lot of people concentrate on a when people come in fitness they go like okay i just want to lose weight or whatever mm. or but it doesn't start with your body it starts with your mindset and when you get the mindset right but the only way to get the mindset right you need to make sure that your mental health is in the in the right order mm. right so you go mindset mental health and then physical health comes because the consistency and the habits don't come from your body executing that comes from your thoughts and your brain executing and then when I started getting consistency, all of a sudden I played basketball again. Wow. My hip still sometimes bothers me, sure. but it's like it's manageable, right? And I'm still performing better than majority of the regular people. Even a lot of trainers can do things that I can while I have a metal rod just because I put the effort, so much effort into it. And okay. what I was kind of trying to show people with my personal story, I'm going to be competing in like physique and then I want to do an Ironman as well to show that a lot of times – 
we use our our issues as crutches for the rest of our lives. Mm -hmm. And we use it as an excuse why we cannot make it versus, mm -hmm. so we allowing whatever happened to us to break us versus challenge us and make us rise to the occasion. And mm -hmm. I think too many people take a victim type of mindset versus becoming a heroes of their own story and empowering others. And now from fitness, from basketball to fitness, to now want to shift into more personal development to help out people to not only get healthy, healthy physically, but also mentally, and then make sure that that energy seeps into all parts of their life. And they also become happier in all areas, including being financially well off. Yeah, that's really cool. And we were talking again before we started and one of the things I love talking about everybody knows is helping other people. So I think I always say it's so cool to be able to see people like yourself that have fought through depression and a car accident and all of the things that you just described to us. But what's awesome for me to see is that you didn't stop there. You were like, I don't want this to happen to other people. And you started training and studying that stuff. And now you're able to give back and help other people. And that is one of the things that I didn't always do. Like when I started my journey of self-awareness and, and le just learning more, like realizing that I actually wanted to learn and be a better human being, I was just so, still so focused on myself. And I think I just had to fix myself first before I could do anything else that even remotely helped anybody else. So um, I always ask the question, like, why do you want to help other people? But you've already pretty much answered that question. And the fact that you, you struggled with your own stuff, like depression for that long, like, gosh, when you were talking about that, like the listeners know, like I've had this neck injury for about four or five months now. And I just got cleared from PT to ever so slightly, like slowly start lifting very light weights and running very, very gently and slowly and not long distance at all. And it's just like, I, I've lost... Right, I was gonna say I've lost so much, but I, I fought with a depression at first, only only so slightly, and then I um, I started reading and reading and reading more and more and more, and I filled up like my hour and a half of workouts every single day with reading a book, and I, I was able to substitute that, and now I feel like my mind is even stronger because of that, and now when I'm gonna get back into it then I'll be even better off because now I'm now out of this injury and this tragedy, I'm a better reader and I'm, I'm, I'm like that, you know? So, um, yeah. So I'm just like, I get, what I'm saying is that bad things happen. Bad things will inevitably happen in our lives, but like anything, we have a choice and we have many choices. And one of the things you said is you can, you can have this victim mindset and you can feel sorry for yourself and use it as this, perpetual excuse for the rest of your life not to like yes. i could just be like oh i there's no way i could do anything there's no way i could go out there and and whatever but i'm just so excited to go out there and do it and i i want to i mean i've lost so much physically speaking like the atrophy has been yeah. mind-boggling i'm 31 so we're very close in age and okay. i've been i gosh since i started walking i've been moving you know i played sports my whole life so i'm i'm excited to share my journey so that's uh, why I align with you so much right now. Cause I understand like not being able to do anything at all. And I can't wait to like, Oh, I ran a mile today, you know, <laughs> like, and just share that and be like, you know, I know you're struggling through some stuff too. And let's, let's get it. I know how it feels. Well, look, look, look at this. Like a lot of people, like, for example, the simplest losing weight, right? Like anybody can relate majority of like your listeners, probably some of them want to get toned up and whatnot. Right. And uh, a lot of times, it's a mental game, like figuring out nutrition, figuring out the routine, like there's a blueprint for it, but it's to stick to something. It's a mental game, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Absolutely. So when you deal with a depression or when you deal with an injury, right? And then you get injuries are more mentally challenging than anything else because yeah. you're in yeah. pain all the time. Yeah. Right. And you cannot and it and it makes you not want to do certain things. So sometimes if you take somebody yeah. injured and you take somebody overweight who is struggling with a body image, it's pretty much the same pattern that both people are going through. 
And if the person can recover from an injury, then the person can lose fat. So neither of them, and if the person can lose fat, then the, the other person can recover from an injury. So the process is exactly the same is figuring out the one step at the time, what you need to do and making sure that you work on your mindset and your mind to get to the right state. And the thing is, I was going to ask you, like, yeah, please. I told you, like, uh, I, like I went through my transition, but I want to ask you, why did you start this podcast? Like yeah. you probably, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe you finished after, like when you were, when you finished with the army, right? Uh, you needed to make a okay, career. Yeah, I was, well, I was in the Navy. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the Navy, sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, Navy, right? it's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, no, no, I read it and I, and yeah. I forgot it, right? So <laughs> you, were, you, you were in the Navy, right? And when you came back, right? Like you still have a full life ahead of you. We're, mm -hmm. we're going to live to like 90 or something, right? So we have another 60 years, mm -hmm. right? But you only knew one part of you, yeah. which is being that, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. now you going through your personal struggle, figuring out what needs to be done and you want to help others mm -hmm. do exactly the same. Yeah. This is where I came from. So yeah. a lot of amazing things come from our personal point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I want you to tell me what happened. Why did you decide it? What was that trigger? Why does that mm -hmm. matter to you so much? Absolutely. And that's a great question. There's so many triggers is the thing like, there is not one reason by any stretch of the imagination. There were so many things that accumulated to give me the driving passion and just desire to want to continuously like just perpetually better myself. And then once I saw like I had this epiphany of, of I loved learning and I, I loved bettering myself in my mid 20s. So about six or seven years ago now. And I, I, if you remember, I said for a couple of years, I was just working, I was such a selfish person in my, in my lower twenties and late teens. And I just cared about myself. And then as I started to learn, I had a, it was a couple of years that I had to really just like rewire talking about rewiring yourself. I had to rewire who I was, how my brain worked. And as I continued to work and work and work, just like you would try to build a body physically, like it was very difficult to rewire my brain and get over all of the things that I was struggling with to grow up and become a better person, the person that I wanted to be because I wasn't. So once I started seeing this change in myself and then I had been in the Navy, like you said, and I realized I wanted to get out of the Navy and I realized there were so many opportunities and I loved my job in the Navy, truly I did, so the accumulation of all of these things, and then I became into leadership positions and I started leading very you know, newer sailors into the Navy, young sailors, uh, kids in their late teens, early twenties, just as I was. So again, I saw myself in these people and a lot of people were complaining, thinking that they were just going about their days so monotonously, thinking that they could never change their lives. Now in the Navy, you can't just, or the military, you can't just quit your job. You're in a contract, right? But mm -hmm. what you can do is the contract ends and you can leave the military and you can go do what you want. So I realized that's what I wanted to do, that I felt like I enjoyed the military, but I felt capped on a lot of things. It, it really wasn't for me. I learned different ways and I would excel more in a direction of my fitting outside of the Navy, which has proved true so far. And I was terrified, absolutely terrified to get out of the military because the military is a really good safety net. It's like not a lot of money, but it's just enough money to be comfortable. And then there's all these great benefits and you're like, I could never get out. There's no way I can make this money. There's no way I can have these benefits when I get out. But I sucked it up. I made up my mind. And as I made up my mind and I continued to learn, that's when I actually started wanting to talk to people that had a, a difficult life, change it around and decided to pursue what they love. Now, the first episode that I recorded, I had no intentions of recording an episode number two. And then it just, I loved the first one so much and I was still in the military for five months. And so I recorded plenty of episodes before I even got out. And then I was like, I'm just gonna continue documenting my journey of my transition, sharing a little bit of my story. And then people like yourself that have had these like mental epiphanies and that have come from a different job that I didn't really desire or like, and they, they, 
they really were honest with themselves and they said, I can make a change. Like you said, they didn't fall that victim mentality. So I wanted to enlighten people. And the way I, I, I talk to a lot of potential guests is I say, I, I want to use you pretty much as like a case study, as a as a real live breathing example of somebody that's actually gone out there. Because it's so like, there are so many people I would take to the side and say, you know, you're not performing very well. And I would say it in gentler terms, but essentially you're not performing well. And what, what's wrong with you? What's going on in your head? And you have the ability to do more. And there's only so much. It's like when your parent scolds you, you don't really want to listen. So my mentality was like, I can't, I can't teach them to fish. But what I can do is I can give them examples of people that didn't know how to fish before and figured out how to fish and fish very efficiently for themselves. So I'm just boom, 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 going through all these examples of people like yourself that have worked different careers and have pursued other careers and are just going and helping other people. And that's always my stipulation. I will not interview somebody. I don't care if you're the smartest, most intellectual best achiever, most successful, richest person ever. But if you don't step out of your circle of influence and try to help other people, I don't want to talk to you. So that's the medium story. <laughs> I could probably go on about it, but yeah. I agree with you. So uh, I, I believe I believe that a lot of people need to put themselves more often outside their comfort zone because uh all the great things happen on our oh, other side of the year abs- i couldn't and yeah, I, couldn't. Uh, I don't i don't think ever once when i made the leap it turned out to be bad mm-hmm. like yes it was scary you're right you're right though like and every single step i was walking through i was like shit i don't know what's gonna happen but it always would turn out okay and mm-hmm. if it didn't turn out okay i learned so much that the next time i did it it was still okay, right? And the thing is, this is probably the biggest thing that I look at. And I, and, and, and I think that would be advice to any listeners or anybody in life. And it's, and it's actually applied to everything in life. So let's look at anything that you were going to do. Let's say you like a certain female and your heart was broken before. If you don't put yourself out there, or the worst case scenario, let's say you did ask yourself, what is the worst case scenario that potentially could happen? So I'll give you two examples. One is with a female, right? You go, you ask, you start dating six months into it. You really invested. It didn't really work out. Your heart got uh, broken. You're probably going to go, okay, it sucks. You're going to start working really, really hard. And instead, you're going to make a lot of money. That's not a bad solu- like That's not a bad solution to the problem because you're going to realize, okay, yeah, you might lose weight or yeah, you might gain weight, but you're going to put yourself because you're going to find you need to find a distraction. Let's say when I spent all that money and I went to Miami, I asked myself, what's going to be the worst case that's going to happen? Let's say if I am 10 or 15 K in debt, hypothetically speaking, which is on for me, that was a, a big amount of money to be in debt. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm like, what's going to be the worst case? I'm like, OK, if the, if nothing comes out of this conference or every single stuff that I've taken, what I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to have to work a little bit harder to make up the money back. So instead of working 40 hours, let's say I'll have to work 50 to 60 hours. But then within three months, I'm going to make the money back and then I'm going to be back to the same lifestyle that I always had. That's why I love what Gary Vee says mm-hmm. every single time when I listen to him is that the worst case, the the something that we're going to regret the most is that something that we've never done. So you don't want to live to like 60, 70, 80 and have regret. And I'd rather fuck up as many times as possible and I'll be scared while I'll be doing it. Like even today, before we started, I said like I've never ran like these ads and like I might be yeah, blowing yeah, yeah. up a lot of money on it, right, on uh, Facebook because this is like a new part of my business that I, I've been re- but I'm like, but if I never do it, how am I going to get better? Like my life is going to stay exactly the same like it was before. And I'm clearly not satisfied with my life being the same. So I have to do something different. Yeah. And the only thing like, so I'm going to try. And if it's not going to work, I'm going to try again. That's why I feel like a lot of people are just not trying at all. And mm-hmm. this sometimes crazy to me because how can you how can you want for a different outcome continue doing the same thing and to continue dating the you know the same type of girl or the same type of guy or could, could continue getting working on like nine to five job and thinking that you're going to make a million 
within this year if your job is paying you only like sixty thousand, right? Mm-hmm. We we all we all talk a lot, but we do very little, and a lot of people literally overestimate how much they can do in a year and really, really underestimate what they can do in a five to 10 years if they really apply themselves. Yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right, man. Like, you're absolutely right. I usually, I usually tell like, listen, when it comes to fitness, people ask me, I usually tell people when it comes to fitness, this one thing, one salad is not going to make you healthy <laughs> and a one burger is not going to make you fat. Right. So, it's okay to have, you know, you got to make sure you apply consistency in your effort to make sure that you get results. And it has to be something different that you haven't done. Yeah, absolutely. That's the only way to elevate the quality of your life. Yeah, you, you have to, <laughs> you have to act, you have to make a change and you have to make the change consistently, just as you said. Nikita, I, I've thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed my time with you. It's one of those conversations well, I probably say it every conversation now because I enjoy it so much. But like, it's one of those conversations where I could just talk for an hour. And that's why like my podcast used to be 60 to 90 minutes. But man, I, I could definitely uh, carry on. And I'm, I'm very and truly appreciative of your time. But before we get out of here today, yeah. what well, I, I want to know, um, you, you said this book, I just want to make sure you said breaking habit of being yourself, breaking the habit of being yourself. Yeah. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by would, Dr. Joe Would that Stagg. be your favorite self-improvement book? It's the one that I'm currently yeah. finishing yeah. up. Yeah, okay, so okay. Currently finishing up. Uh, I love Dr. Joe Dispenza. Okay. Like, he basically takes a person who doesn't believe in meditation or in the law of attraction, and he explains it in a scientific way for people to understand it. That's so awesome. for anybody who thinks that meditation or law of attraction is like voodoo or whatever, they will have a better understanding once they read this book. And that's why there's a certain there's another book that I read. Like there's certain people that I always will just promote shamelessly yeah. because I just really <laughs> believe in their stuff and I don't need no like send me a paycheck or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's just it is that good. Yeah, that's and awesome. Benza, is doing great things and i think more people should read his books yeah. he also probably, has another yeah. book uh, a placebo effect okay. which is really really great book yeah. anything that you look by him is going to be amazing i'll add and, i'll uh, add it to the list man these are the, so whatever so i have an online training business like a lifestyle coaching business now and there are two books that i usually tell people to read one is going to be this book and the second one is uh, Men Up by Bedros Koulian, which is a fitness entrepreneur. I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure you probably heard yeah. of him. Like he's absolutely amazing. It's just not no nonsense type of book yeah. that tells you like every single decision that you make is affects your life. We are the sum of all the decisions that we make. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all it really is. Yeah, man. And speaking of plugs, what's if everybody wants to contact you, they want to follow your page or your website or anything, how can they get a hold of you? So I have two Instagram pages. One is my personal Instagram page where I do all the personal development and fitness tips. It's called Nikita, my first name. So N-I-K-I-T-A underscore P-N-T-G-N, which just stands for Pentagon without the vowels. And uh, my second page is specifically for women. I help out women grow build their curves and, and that's called bg underscore workout awesome nikita like Bro. i said I, i'm i'm so appreciative of your time and everything so thanks so much for being on here it's a great conversation and i can't wait to share it with other people my pleasure appreciate it yeah see ya